Now, from the University of Okaboji, it's Okaboji Broadcast with Jeff Thee. Welcome to Okaboji Broadcast, everybody. I'm Jeff Thee, coming to you from the Dickinson County Courthouse here in the community room. And I'm talking today, I have from the Dickinson County Sheriff's Office, Deputy Josh Roberts, and from the Milford Police Department, I have Keaton Werner. Welcome, guys. Thanks for being here with me. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. We are at that point of the year. In fact, we are starting now with... Uh, with school beginning here, and so we're, we wanted to take a moment to talk about safety for, for school buses during this time of the year. You know, we take a, a summer off, and, and sometimes people believe, or forget kind of the basics, or even you got new drivers who haven't had to face it. And so let's talk about, first of all, how important it is, and, and some of the, the violations that you guys see of people with school buses as they're stopped and so forth. Whoever wants to go first. Yeah, so it is a, it's a very um, easy thing to forget. Um, however, it's probably one of the most important things you can't forget. Mm -hmm. um, having a child lost is just unacceptable at any thing, but for something so silly, so simple, yeah. to have that type of an accident would just be just, just I don't know, I, I just don't understand how someone can't put kids at the top. Yeah, so. and it's just such a, you know... People, when you see that stop sign come out, that, that doesn't mean slow down and see if there's any kids getting on and off the bus. And, and you guys supplied me with some videos to look at. I'm just amazed at the number of people that, you know, they, they do start to do the right thing. They they yeah. they touch their brakes and they slow down. And they kind of look to see if there's any kids coming onto the bus or getting off. And then they slide on through, which is against the law. Yep. That is, that's actually the most common one, yeah. um, especially even if they see kids getting off the school bus and they walk away from the road. They still think, we've seen several times people go over on the shoulder and think it's okay to pass. Yeah. It's still not okay to pass. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Keaton, what are some of the, the, the you cruising through Milford and the schools down there for Okaboji? What, what are you seeing during the school year that... Uh, um, I th the biggest thing I'm seeing is after school hours. I okay. think that's where a lot of most, a majority of our violations are coming through. Um, you know, we do we get some in the mornings, um, but you know, you get towards the end of the school day, there you get those kids that are eager to get home, and they just they don't they don't pay attention, um, and they just they just don't care. We and you bring up an important point because you know a lot of elementary school students, and they're in a hurry. That, you know, they're not noticing if there's any traffic that is not paying attention, and all they know is they want to get from point A to point B, and boom, they go. And if you're not paying attention and coming to that complete stop and waiting for the bus to complete its business, that's when problems begin. That's uh, absolutely right. And, you know, even just located by our high school in town, we have a daycare that's just a block uh, to the east there. Yes. And they have a bus stop there. And, you know, just last year alone, we had just a few um, violations just right there. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a dangerous zone because you have the daycare and then you have a park right across the street. Right. So you have kids going in both directions. Yeah. Um, and I know and just off of my mind, there's one of the videos I supplied to you, a car came up, kind of stopped, slowed down, and they're like, well, no, they're going on into the daycare. They're not thinking about the park that's over here. Right. And so they went right through. And yeah. So... And as we are taping here today, this morning, we had very heavy fog. And, you know, we're going to see that here in the early fall as we get closer and closer to winter. And, you know, that takes away, obviously, visibility. And first of all, during those conditions, slow it down a little bit. I, you know, we're all in a hurry to get <laughs> yeah. wherever we have to be, but slow it down. And then you can observe, but that's even more important time to when that bus comes to a stop and the stop sign comes out and the lights are flashing. If you're in a hurry, tough it out and, and wait it through and let those kids get on and off safely. Yeah. And I know there's, I mean, even at Milford, it can be kind of hard to tell or see sometimes through the fog. So I can't imagine what county is like sometimes during the mornings and stuff like that. So. Yeah. And that's the, I, I, I would the agree. Country, yeah. um, the fog is a big one, but the biggest thing is the cell phone. Um, I would venture to say 90% of the violations because someone's on a cell phone. Yeah. And that, that's, you know. And first of all, that is against the law. <laughs> Correct. To be on your cell phone while, you're, while you're driving. Yes. And, yeah. I mean, it only takes a split second. 
Split seconds, all it takes. Yeah. Um, it That's leads me up to our worst violation. Um, I won't say who the business was, but there was a business vehicle. Um, it was just east of Spirit Lake here, um, coming up behind the bus. Clearly, the driver was on his cell phone, didn't see the bus until the last second, and the vehicle took the ditch. Mm. Um, luckily, the bus driver was paying attention, saw it coming, knew they weren't going to stop, and kept the doors closed. The kids were just ready to step off the bus into a car coming through. the. Actually, it was a van. Um, so if the bus driver was not paying attention, right. um, it would have been ugly, and we would have had some serious injuries. Yeah. Well, we're glad to have joining us here today, along with uh, our other guests, we've got Spirit Lake Police Officer Ryan Voss. Ryan, thanks for stopping in and talking about school safety. We were, we were just kind of discussing things that we see, things that violations that people do, uh, they don't think about it, they're in a hurry. What are some of the violations you see that could cause uh, harm to our school students as they're getting on and off the school bus for anything? Uh, just distracted driving on yeah. their phones. Pretty common one. Well, for our, our school officers uh, with uh, Ryan and Keaton, uh, I know that Spirit Lakes had officers in the school for quite some time, and, and, and you had said you'd been there just last year was your first yeah, this, year? This is my second year. Okay. Yep. Well, let's talk about some of the benefits of that, you know, having a, an officer in the school. Not only security, but I think there's an opportunity, uh, much like the D.A.R.E. program that uh, Greg Balloon does. You know, you're in the school, you're talking to the kids, you become a real person. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not just a, well, that's an officer. It's a real person. It's someone you can bond with. And What are some of the benefits of being there in the, the school system? Ryan, why don't we start with you? Yeah, for sure, community relations, and like you said, it makes us um, appear more like a person instead of just an officer, and um, there's kids that get used to seeing us in the school every day and saying hello and want to talk to us at lunch and tell us certain things about them or their lives, um, along with them having, you know, legal questions. Occasionally they say, well, what would happen, you know, yeah. if this and um, so we can kind of guide them in the right way and um, as well as you know our our main concern in the school isn't you know writing every kid a ticket or something like that right. so uh, guiding them when they do mess up and kind of giving them support and showing them where to go as well so that we can correct behaviors before they're an adult and then they get into you know get to go to jail or something like that right exactly and how about for you and Milford? I think the biggest thing that stuck out to me was what you just said was us showing that we're real people. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, last year being my first year, there were, was obviously a change for Okaboji. You know, kids weren't used to it. Um, so I started off the school year with, you know, some kids having no interest and wanted to uh, speak to the school cop. You know, but as, a, as the year went by, towards the end of the year, those kids really opened up to me and not just, I mean, not just me, but to the department. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a big thing for me that I, I love to see is, you know, we're showing that we're not just cops um, and we're there for, for you as, you know, a resource and, you know, just to be there as a, a guiding hand for you yes. and, and in life. So Yeah, and, and that's what I see as the benefit out of it as well. Like I mentioned with the, the D.A.R.E. program with the sheriff being in there for those uh, fifth graders, is it every year? that uh, I think it is. And, uh, sure. And he's done that for... <laughs> A lot of years, but having an officer in there, you know, I think they learn that officers aren't just there to be waiting for you to slip up and do something wrong, but to see that you're there, you're, you're a line of defense. Yeah. You're there to protect, mm -hmm. to defend, and when they learn that as they go on through life, you know, it's nice to have that non-objective uh, uh, view of our of our men and women in blue that uh, they're there for us yeah. to, to help us and to keep us safe so and when you can learn that young I think it reaps benefits as they move through life so absolutely well anything else on, on bus safety uh, just be aware be alert slow down and when it comes time to and like you had said earlier before we got going it was uh, uh, one person sees somebody slow down and maybe scoot through, 
Well, everybody's doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be that first person to come to a stop. Yeah, if, I guess if you don't know the laws, you can go to Google and search it up. It's, it's pretty easy to find the laws and, and what to do and what's right. And if you don't know, just educate yourself or educate others. Well, it's, it's pretty simple because it says stop when lights are flashing. Yeah, so, you know, it, it, lights aren't hard to miss. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. All right, gentlemen, thank you for being here with me. Thank you for your service to our area and uh, we like, like I said, we like to back our, our men and women in blue and we we certainly appreciate you keeping us safe. Thank you so Thank much. you. Absolutely. Our guests here today, of course, uh, we have Deputy Josh Roberts, uh, Spirit Lake Officer Ryan Voss and Milford Officer Keaton Verner. We thank them for their time. Please be safe out there for our young people and thank you for watching us right here on Okaboji Broadcast. Okaboji Broadcast from the studios at Historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park is brought to you in part by West Wealth Management, a financial advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, advisor Jan Spielman, AJ Spielman, and Erica Wachholz. The headquarters of the University of Okaboji is at the Three Suns, open Monday through Saturday 10 to 5 and Sunday from 10 to 4. Bank Midwest, dream big, plan wisely, live well. Lakes Regional Healthcare and Avera Partner. Beck Engineering in Spirit Lake. V Radiant Laser Skin Studio in the Okaboji Plaza in Okaboji. 